I'm going to tell a story this morning. The story is called The Dragonfly, and with uh, deep appreciation, um, I share with you that uh, this story was, was uh, taught to me by Donna Wash, shared to me by Donna Washington. And so uh, it's, a, it's a great story, and, and I hope to do it justice. The story is also a story from the Sufi tradition. Sufis are um, uh, Muslim mystics, Islamic mystics. And so this is a story that's told in that tradition. It's a story about life and death. There was a pond, a beautiful pond, And in this pond were all of the creatures that you would expect to find in a pond, including a community of water bugs that lived down at the bottom of the pond in the the roots of the plants there. Life was good for these water bugs. The water in the pond was the right temperature, just very pleasant. There wasn't a current, but the the motion of the water felt good, felt good on them. There was plenty of food. There was vegetation, rich vegetation, all over the bottom of the pond, and so water bugs could eat. And there were also moments of, of wonder and awe and fear. Every once in a while, an enormous catfish would swim by, and all of the water bugs would say, wow, at the same time that they shivered. And every once in a while, a giant snapping turtle would pass by, and all of the water bugs would, would marvel at this amazing sight. Life was good in the pond, except there was a mystery. A mystery that the water bugs were perplexed by, were confused by. See, every once in a while, every once in a while, a water bug would begin to climb up the stem of the lily pad, climbing up, 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 and then pass out of sight. It was a mystery to them. They wondered where... Where does this water bug go? Where, where does it go? And they thought, well, we should ask. We should ask one of the water bugs where it's gone when it, when it comes back. Except once a water bug climbs up, 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 it never returned, and so it was a mystery. The water bugs decided to hold a meeting to take counsel with one another. They all came with different feelings, and different ideas. They wondered, they wondered where one of the other water bugs went when it climbed up. And they all had different ideas about where it might go. They also talked about their feelings. Some water bugs were afraid, afraid of the mystery. Some were angry at their friends for having left. Many were sad, and some were curious about the mystery. And at that council, after a long time of debate and discussion, it was decided. It was decided among them. They made a compact together that the next one of them who climbed up would promise, would swear to return, to reveal the mystery of where he went. And so one day, a water bug began to climb climbing up, up, up through the water, passing through the surface of the water and climbing to rest on a lily pad or a piece of a stalk of plant life. And then all of a sudden, the water bug began to change. From out of its body came a long tail and four translucent wings appeared. This was new. This was different. 
the water bug had become a dragonfly. The water bug larvae had become a dragonfly. And around the dragonfly there was newness. No more water, it was air that blew with the breeze. No more water plants, instead the oak and the maple and the cattails. No more fish, but all throughout the sky, birds and new animals. The dragonfly flew around this new land and then remembered, remembered the promise that the dragonfly had made as a water bug to return. And it was at that moment that the dragonfly turned around, flew back to the lily pad and landed, looked upon the surface of the water and looked for the friends below, but realized, realized that there was no way to tell all of them about what the truth was. The Sufis tell this story not to try to convince us that we're dragonflies or that we're water bugs, but they tell it out of a sense of joy and playfulness and understanding of the mystery of life and the mystery of death. I have to let you in on a little secret. For four years as an undergrad, I studied the religions of the world with, with a lot, I spent a lot of time in the library studying, a lot of time doing fieldwork studying, and then graduate school and I got a degree in theology. Spent even more time studying the theologies of the world. And I will tell you that after all of this studying and all of the years of studying, the question of what happens to us after we die is one that I still answer by saying, I do not know. I do not know. And I am confident that nobody else knows for sure. But, but, what years of ministry and the spiritual practice and my own faith teach me and tell me is that even though it may be something that is feared, it may be something that people have anxiety about, that it is okay. The truth of it is whatever it, there is, it is good and it is okay. That is a truth that I know. And so today, during our ritual, we will have a time where if you brought a picture, you can bring the picture forward, or if you have a, a dragonfly um, slip of paper, you can write the name of someone that you're remembering on it. And during the ritual, which will come up after our offertory, and I'll introduce it, we'll come down the front, and you can bring the slip of paper and lay it here on the, on the beautiful altar and a picture as well if you brought that. The story of the dragonfly. <laughs> 